of OS 10 over the last five years. In that time frame, of course, Microsoft released XP. And <laughs> looking forward, <laughs> looking forward, what do we see? Well, the next release, I'm very pleased to announce that the next release of OS 10 is going to be called Leopard. And uh, we're not going to be focusing on it at this conference today, but uh, we certainly will in the future. And uh, we intend to release Leopard at the end of 2006 or early 2007, right around the time when uh, Microsoft is expected to release Longhorn. So that's what the future looks like, and uh, we look forward to telling you about Leopard. So that's what's up for Mac OS X Tiger. Now, let's go to a big topic, transitions. Let's talk about transitions. The Mac in its history has had two major transitions so far, right? The first one, 68K to PowerPC. And that transition happened about 10 years ago in the mid-90s. I wasn't here then, but the team then did a great job from everything I hear. And the PowerPC, <laughs> the PowerPC set Apple up for the next decade. It was a good move. The second major transition, though, has been even bigger. And that's the transition from OS 9 to OS 10 that we just finished a few years ago, in the early part of this decade. This was a brain transplant. And even though these operating systems vary in name only by one, they are worlds apart in their technology. OS 10 is the most advanced operating system on the planet, and it has set Apple up for the next 20 years. Today, it's time to begin a third transition. We want to constantly be making the best computers for you and the rest of our users. And so it's time for a third transition. And yes, it's true. <laughs> we are going to begin the transition from the power PC to Intel processors. And we are going to begin it for you now and for our customers next year. Now, why are we going to do this? <laughs> right? Didn't we just get through going from OS 9 to OS 10? Isn't the business great right now? Why do we want another transition? Because we want to be making the best computers for our customer looking forward. Now, I stood up here two years ago in front of you, and I promised you this. And we haven't been able to deliver that to you yet. I think a lot of you would like a G5 in your power book, and we haven't been able to deliver that to you yet. But these aren't even the most important reasons. The most important reasons are that as we look ahead, though we have great products right now, and we've got some great power PC products still yet to come, as we look ahead, we can envision some amazing products we want to build for you. And we don't know how to build them with the future power PC roadmap. And that's why we're going to do this. When we look at Intel, they've got great performance, yes. But they've got something else that's very important to us. Just as important as performance is power consumption. And the way we look at it is performance per watt. For one watt of power, how much performance do you get? And when we look at the future roadmaps projected out mid-2006 and beyond, what we see is the power PC gives us sort of 15 units of performance per watt. But the Intel roadmap in the future gives us 70. And so this tells us what we have to do. Now, this is not going to be a transition that happens overnight. It's going to happen over a period of a few years. Again, we've got great products right now, and we've got some great PowerPC products in the pipeline yet to, to be introduced. But starting next year, we will begin introducing Macs with Intel processors in them, and over time, this transition will occur. So when we meet here again this time next year, our plan is to be shipping Macs with Intel processors by then. And when we meet here again two years from now, our plan is that the transition will be mostly complete. And we think it will be complete by the end of 2007. So this is a two-year transition. So first transition. 68K to PowerPC. Second transition, OS 9 to OS 10, 
We're going to begin a third transition from the Power PC to Intel processors. There are two major challenges in this transition. <laughs> the first one is making Mac OS X sing on Intel processors. Right? Now, I have something to tell you today. Mac OS X has been leading a secret double life <laughs> for the past five years. There have been rumors to this effect, <laughs> but this is Apple's campus in Cupertino. Let's zoom in on it. In that building right there, we've had teams doing the just-in-case scenario. And our rules have been that our designs for OS X must be processor independent, and that every project must be built for both the PowerPC and Intel processors. And so today, for the first time, I can confirm the rumors that every release of Mac OS X has been compiled for both PowerPC and Intel. This has been going on for the last five years. <laughs> Just in case. So Mac OS X is cross-platform by design right from the very beginning. So, Mac OS X is singing on Intel processors, and I'd just like to show you right now. As a matter of fact, <coughs> as a matter of fact, the system I've been using here, <laughs> let's go have a look. Let's go have a look here. <laughs> 